Today in the Fresh Brewing Club, I'm running in the Nike Alpha Fly 2 and answering the question, are these good for the average runner? Welcome back to the Fresh Brewing Club. So for today's video, I am at a local park here to test out the Nike Alpha Fly 2. Now, this review is from the perspective of a decidedly average runner. I am about a four hour marathoner and I'm here to answer the question, are these shoes worth it? They are pretty expensive. They're extremely high tech. Is this too much for someone like me who I'm looking to get a PR of, I don't know, like 330, 345. My marathon PR is 349. So I want to know, are these too much? I've seen a lot of people people around me at that pace wearing these and I've always wondered like is it worth it or should I just stick with my traditional like invincibles or a pegasus so my plan is to run six miles I'm gonna run two miles at nine minutes 830 eight minute mile pace which I think kind of cover the general paces that I plan on running in these shoes All right, I just want to note this weather, it's awful, but these are the things I do to answer the questions that you're asking. Started my first two miles, nine minute pace. I'm way ahead of pace because these shoes are fast. <laughs> these are super squishy and super springy at the same time. Really incredible. I'm honestly having a hard time slowing down to nine minute pace because I obviously want to go much faster in these. So I've run in the vapor flies and the arches on those shoes just killed my feet. I don't know if that means I have flat feet, but I'm not experiencing the same thing with these. These are much more comfortable than the initial version of the vapor fly so far. Two miles down, time to kick up the pace to 8.30. My initial reaction at nine minutes, pretty good. It doesn't feel like I'm running too slow for these shoes. There's enough width and outsole rubber in the back of the heel that as a heel striker at this speed, I think they'd hold up. All right, four miles in, kicking it up to eight minute per mile pace. Feels good. Overall, these shoes are so fun to run in. It honestly does remind me a little bit of the Invincible, which is my favorite shoe. So I don't know. I like these a lot. Coming up on five miles. I want to see what I can do. I'm not in great shape, but I'm going to push the pace a little bit faster than eight. We'll see what I run, but these are awesome. Running 630. I cannot sustain this pace, but feels great on the feet at least. The lungs, not so much. So that was my first run in the Alpha Fly 2s. I ran at three different paces just to see how they felt. And like I said, I thought they were they were pretty good at, at the nine minute slower pace. They were kind of weird at 8.30, but eight minutes was when I, I really felt the impact. All three of those paces, I definitely felt like I wanted to go faster. Just putting these shoes on, there's just the, the padding and the, the springiness of that carbon fiber plate inside of these just makes you feel fast. It's, it's very different than other shoes, but somewhat similar to the Nike Invincible, which is my favorite shoe of all time, where it just has that cushioning and, and kind of prepared propels you forward a little bit just with the way the shoe is built. This is to the extreme. So I really did like running in these. I mentioned earlier the arches in the vapor flies hurt my feet really bad. I don't think I could run a full marathon in the vapor flies just because they're so uncomfortable. They're definitely fast, but they're not comfortable. I don't have as much of a concern with the alpha flies. I think they are comfortable enough to get me to the finish line around four hours without my feet just absolutely killing me. So overall, I definitely think that the Alpha Flies will improve your time, whether you're running a two hour and 10 minute marathon or a four hour marathon or a five hour marathon. I think there is absolutely a benefit to getting these shoes. I mentioned the cost, they're pretty expensive. However, there's a lot of other expensive hobbies out there that are far more expensive. Do you realize how much a good set of golf clubs cost? It's ridiculous. So. I do think that this shoe is worth it if you are really looking to improve your times. I would say the faster you push the pace, the more you're probably gonna get out of these. I would not buy these just as like a daily trainer, like just to go out and go for some runs. This is definitely a shoe that you wanna use to like hit a specific time or to run a race. I'll get to the durability in a second, but if you're just looking for a, a running shoe just to pick up and run in, probably not the option for you. But if you are looking for a racing shoe, I would definitely give this shoe a 
I try. Something that's a big deal to me is durability. If I'm going to spend this amount of money on a pair of shoes, I want to make sure that they last. So I'm a heel striker, which means my heel hits the ground first, and then I push off with these shoes. So I tend to wear down the back of the shoes. After one run, I can already see uh, a little bit of wear and tear on the exposed Zumex foam on the back. However, the actual rubber held up pretty well. So I think that's how these are going to break down the most is that foam where I'm, I'm landing on my heel is going to crack and peel. And hopefully that's durable enough to last me. Like I'm hoping to get about 200 miles out of these, which is a little bit on the low end, but it is a racing shoe. But for me, a heel striker, I definitely think I'm going to start to break down this heel area because it's just raw exposed Zumex foam. The Volt color here is painted on. So that is going to rub away pretty quickly all across the, the midsole and the outsole here. If you are a four foot striker where you land uh, on the front of your foot and push off, I think these could last 500 miles. They're definitely designed for four foot strikers. I don't think you have to be a four foot striker to run in this. There is enough padding in the heel. There's enough rubber on the, the outsole of the heel where you'll be okay. So I think no matter what your stride is, these should work out pretty well for you. But I will continue to make videos as as I run more and more miles in these shoes just to see exactly how they break down over time. Another thing is the fit. Uh, I would say these are true to size. They probably run just a little bit bigger than your actual shoe. So I'm a size 10 with Nike. This is a size 10. I think there's just, just a little bit of extra room, but I think that's a good thing because if you're 25 miles into a marathon, your foot is going to be a little bit bigger than when you started. So I, I would just get true to size, uh, get your regular Nike shoe size if you know it uh, with these shoes and you should be fine. They fit great right out of the box. So that is my overall first impression of these shoes. Like I said, these are really fun to run in. I really like these. I'm excited to run uh, some races. I'm excited to run a marathon in these. I will definitely make a video about that. I'm gonna make a bunch of videos about this. So subscribe so you don't miss my future reactions as I get 100 miles, 200 miles, run a marathon, all those sorts of things. I will make videos about that so you can follow along. But again, I, I really do like this shoe. I think it's definitely worth it. There's some great deals out there. I got these at a great price on StockX. So check that out. So overall, just a great shoe, really fun to run in, and I'm excited to log more miles. So if you have any questions about this shoe, let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. If you run in this shoe, let me know what you think. Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Is it good for a four-hour marathon or like myself, or is it not worth it? Definitely let me know in the comments. But that is today's video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you soon.